Wow, this smells great and it looks great. This is a historic pumpkin soup recipe from 1769. Let's find out how to make it. Welcome to 18th Century Cooking. So this recipe comes from this uh, cookbook called The Professed Cook uh, by Claremont. He, this is actually a French cookbook that's translated into the English, and this was done in 1769. So it's an 18th century English from the French cookbook, right? And this is a pumpkin soup recipe. It's kind of long. I'm going to read parts of it here. Uh, cut your pumpkin in such a manner as you may join it again handsomely. Take out all the seeds and half the flesh. And then he talks about preparing the shell of the pumpkin to receive the soup at the end. And then here he talks about putting the soup together. He says, um, take your, your pumpkin pieces, uh, cut into dices bits of the inside, boil in water to a marmalade. Uh, then add a pint of milk boiled with a bit of butter, sugar, and salt. When you are ready, add six yolks of eggs. Put a dried crust of bread in the pumpkin shell, So, we're, and then pour the milk soup part upon it. Cover it as to make it appear whole, and then serve it to the table. So, it's a, this is a very interesting looking. He's really taking time to tell us how to serve this, how to make it look, and then uh, how to make this uh, pumpkin soup that goes inside of it. So, what we're going to do, instead of sort of taking one pumpkin and hollowing it out and taking half of the flesh from the inside, we're going to go ahead and use one of these nice small pumpkins uh, to create the, the shell. I'm just going to take the seeds out, set that aside, uh, bake it slightly, and then we're going to use another whole pumpkin to make the soup part of it. So, uh, let me get this cut up into dices. Well, there's our diced uh, pumpkin pieces. I'm going to put these into our pot and add enough water. Let's get these kind of flattened out. Uh, add enough water. We don't want to have too much water. We don't want to have a soup that's like too soupy, right? So we're going to add just enough water to cover these. And then I'm going to put these on the fire to boil. We need to get these down into that marmalade state. Okay, our uh, mixture looks really good, nice and kind of thick. Maybe next time I try it with slightly less water, uh, but a good thick mixture. And we've got a fix for that anyway. So now we need to add some flavor components to this and thicken it up. Uh, we're going to add a little bit of salt here. So I've got some salt. The recipe calls for a bit of butter. I don't know exactly what a bit is to this particular guy. So. There's our bit of butter. There we go. Bit of butter. Interestingly enough, this is sweetened. A lot of these dishes have sweet and sour kind of mixed together. Uh, maybe the way we wouldn't necessarily do it. Now, there are other pu pumpkin uh, soup recipes. In earlier recipe books, the ones I was the one I was using last week from 1650, that had a pumpkin soup recipe, and the 1750s Spanish cookbook had a, a pumpkin soup recipe, and it had honey as a sweetener. So here we're going to add just some sugar to this one, like this recipe calls for. There we go. We don't know exactly how much. Now uh, it calls for some milk, or we could even add cream. So this is sort of like a cream of pumpkin soup. Uh, you know, it calls for a pint. I don't want to thin this up too much. So, uh, I mean, it all really depends on how much pumpkin you got, right? So there's that. And now to kind of re-thicken it back up, uh, it calls for adding eggs, the yolks of eggs. Now, I want to add this in while it's still warm, um, but not so hot that it will cook the eggs, or, or we have to be really careful about how we, how we bring these in. So I've got the yolks of six eggs. Let me warm these up with a little bit of the, our mixture here. And get this going. Okay, one more mix. Okay, now this can go in. This feels like it's just barely cool, uh, a little more cool than I want it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and just set this back on, on the fire for a second to thicken this up. I don't want to overcook this at this point. These, these eggs, you know, that we just put in, they're meant to thicken it up. 
um, and I, I don't want to overdo that. So I'm going to put this over the fire for just a second. It depends on the temperature of your mixture as it came in here. Well, when you add that milk to it and the other ingredients, if it's still nice and warm, you may not need to warm this back up, but we're going to put this on a very low fire, warm this back up, and then it's ready to go into its pumpkin bowl. So let me get this on the fire. So here's our pumpkin bowl that the recipe talked about at the very beginning, where we cut the top off so that we can put it back on again, just like we do a modern, you know, jack-o'-lantern. You can cut a design in it, which is very, very interesting. Now, they did a thing with sort of like a meringue mixture that they would put in the carvings and then bake it. Uh, we tried that. It didn't do, it didn't look like what we thought would be very interesting. So we just put some simple carvings on this one. You could probably have a lot of fun with decorating this pumpkin, right? And, and that's one of the great parts about this. It's got a, it has a very uh, fun presentation. So uh, we cut this top off. Uh, this one, we just scooped out the, the innards and we baked it a little bit so that um, it's kind of uh, ready to go. And now what we can do here, uh, the recipe calls for a bit of bread in the bottom. All these recipes, all these French recipes um, for soup all call for bread in the bottom of your soup. It's just part of how it was done, right? So we're going to go ahead and slice a piece of bread here and put it in the bottom of this uh, pumpkin bowl. And there's a nice bit. We can break it up a little bit. Uh, because we don't, it'll, that way it'll fit better. But this will thicken it up and it gives you something to sort of bite into at the bottom, something to, you know, dig in there and try to find and thicken it up. So now that that's there, we can go ahead and pour our mixture in. It's nice and warm now. And now this is ready to go to the table. It's ready to serve. Well, we can put our little lid on or maybe we can leave the lid right beside it but uh, we can put a spoon in it and it's ready to go to the table. Ah, there we go. Looks good, smells good. Wait, it's missing one thing. I think even though the recipe didn't call for it, some of the other ones similar to it called for a little bit of nutmeg. There we go. Let me mix that in. Now, now it's ready. Now it's ready. Let's. Let's find out what this one tastes like. Hmm. Whoa. Hey. Wow. So um, we did a preliminary one. You know, I like to test these things out. And uh, this one's much better. Really turned out great. Um, nice and thick and has some wonderful flavors in there. Nutmeg not being the least there. It's really good. Uh, we've got some nice bread here to thicken it up. And I think putting it back on the fire to thicken up just a touch really uh, worked well. It's still got enough of that pumpkin um, kind of solidity of it, uh, you know, that it isn't just broken down into a pur pure puree, which you can do. And some of the recipes actually call for pushing this pumpkin mixture through a sieve so that it was perfectly smooth. I kind of like it with a little bit of its texture left in it. So, um, but I, 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 this, you know, the, uh, the egg and the milk kind of almost gives you a little bit of a, mm, like a custardy, you know, flavor to it. Uh, but, um, it's certain the pumpkin certainly isn't lost in the least. So it's got some really good, uh, fun flavors in it. And again, this is, this is, um, 18th century French, very, very similar to some of the other recipes like the, uh, the Spanish recipe. And you'll see these pumpkin recipes also show up in say in North America. Um, not as much. I went looking in the English cookbooks, didn't find anything quite like this other than this cookbook itself. This is, uh, the professed cook and it's, tr it was translated from the French into the English in the 18th century. So it's a kind of a, a recipe book that, you know, someone well to do in Great Britain would have access to. They'd have this kind of a cookbook that, that they, they could purchase. This was 1769. So right there in the middle of the 18th century. Let me, Man, I'm going to eat this whole thing. Really, really good. Hey, I want to thank you for coming along as we kind of experiment and, you know, sort of go back into history and see what it 
actually smelled like. See what it actually tasted like. What was the food like on their table? This gives us a glimpse. Now, maybe it's, you know, kind of a high class, you know, sort of take on that, uh, but still a really, really interesting uh, kind of glimpse into history. Thank you so much for coming along today as we savor the flavors and the aromas of the 18th century.